again, it's my honor to be here today and present these people to you. Uh, our next speaker um, is Al Friedrich, the National Sales Manager of North America for Alexander Work Roller Compaction Experts. Alexander Work U.S. Headquarters and Operations are located just outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I was just there for one of their open houses in the fall. It, they have a spectacular new training facility. It was a real honor to take part in that. Uh, the Alexander Work team is a big part of what we do here at Techceuticals. I have a machine sitting right next to me, uh, one of their roller compactors. It's WP120. I, I like to make Al, Al take it apart and put it back together because he's better at it than me. I keep saying I don't know how to clean it, and I get away with getting him to do it. Thank you, Al, for buying into that. But uh, I'm looking forward to your presentation, Al. You're a great guy, great presenter. Ladies and gentlemen, Al Friedrich. Yes, I am. All set to go, Mike, and thanks for the introduction. I don't see you again. Double check your There you are. You're all ready, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. Al Friedrich, Alexander Work, the roller compaction. I'm going to call you the roller compaction expert today because that's what you are, Al. Thank you. I like that. Thanks, Mike. Awesome introduction. Really appreciate it. So thanks again, Mike. And for all who are uh, watching with us, welcome to the Virtual Pharma Expo 2020. Good afternoon to those of you in my time zone or good morning to you in the earlier time zones. So what I'd like to talk about a little bit today is Alexander Work. I represent Alexander Work, and I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about our company, which focuses on compacting, granulating, grading, and shredding. Our focus is definitely in the pharmaceutical, food, life science, chemical, and nuclear industry. So let's talk a little bit more about the word granulation. You heard me talk about granulation, and let's talk a little bit about exactly what we're doing here. Granulation, if you take a look, is actually a function that we're performing on the material. If you look at my uh, video here, you can see that the material on the top has very poor flow properties, but the one on the bottom flows nicely. The materials are actually the same. What's been done to it is known as granulation. I've taken a light, fluffy powder and turned it into a nice flowing powder instead by increasing the particle size or the particle size distribution. So once again, what we've done, we've taken a powder, We've compressed that powder into a flake. The flakes are actually held together, not by using any type of a binder, but simply by the van der Waals forces between the molecules holding it together and forming a flake, or some people in the industry also call it a ribbon. What we're then gonna do is take that flake and mill that flake down into a granule. That granule then gets pushed downstream to another process, commonly into a tablet press, and the reason we're doing this really is to enhance the flow properties of the material because as we've seen in the past couple demonstrations or lectures, some of these tablet presses run really fast in order of about 250 or 300,000 tablets per hour. So we have to ensure that the tablet press gets fed accurately and evenly so we can avoid underdosing or overdosing. So I talked a little bit about poor flowing properties of powders, some of the reasons for powders that may not flow very well, it's actually a whole seminar unto itself, but it could be hydroscopic reasons or very cohesive reasons for the powder not to flow. Um, smaller particle sizes typically mean more surface area or higher cohesive effects, and we typically see this with really low density material, really low density powders. Our equipment is actually processing powders down as low as two pounds per cubic foot or 33 grams per liter, as a matter of fact. So let's take a look at the Alexander Work roller compactors and talk about some of the advantages of the design. If you look at some other machines out in the industry versus ours, you'll notice that ours has a horizontal feed screw and vertically oriented rolls. There's a couple of reasons that we find this to be a benefit, and let's focus actually on the feed screw design. If you look at the feed screw, or what I call metering screw sometimes, because it's a horizontal de design, that kind of eliminates the effects of gravity acting as a pre-compressing force on the material. Think about it, you might have an IBC which could have three or five feet of head height of material above the feed hopper. What's actually happening is gravity is pushing down on that material, they are pre-compressing it or pre-compacting it. But if we use a horizontal feed screw or metering screw, what happens then is I simply take that material and transport it or present it to the counter-rotating rolls. Our rolls are vertically oriented, as I indicated there, 
So sometimes you may have a little bit of side seal leakage between the rolls, but with a vertically oriented roll design, what happens is I can take that side seal leakage and send it out through a small pipe on the side there or a chute and reintroduce it into the feed hopper as uncompressed spines instead of pushing it through the rest of the system into the granulators. Just another note about the roller compactor design regarding the roll gap control system. We do use hydraulic pressure to force the rolls together as we're compressing the material. We also have a feedback loop based on the gap between the rolls. So what happens is if you put in your recipe a certain gap that you're looking for, the feed screw is going to modulate its speed up and down to hold that roll gap very precisely, usually plus, usually plus or minus 0.1 millimeters. That way we ensure a very consistent flake density and a very consistent flake thickness. So I was talking a little bit about the feed screw and the metering screw and the counter rotating rolls. Let's take a look at a nice shot that I usually like to discuss with our uh, customers here when we're talking about it. The arrows coming in from the left represent the material being transported by the feed screw. They push the material or present the material into the counter rotating rolls at first in the slip region and then in the nip region. Nip region or the nip angle as sometimes you hear in the industry is not just a theoretical concept, it's actually very real. And if you take a look on the right hand side, you'll see a view of one of our machines where we removed the side seals shortly after we stopped to run. And you can see the end of the feed screw with a little space between and then the material between the rolls. That's actually where the nip angle has picked up or that's where the nip angle or nip region starts. And that's where the rolls are grabbing the material and compressing the material. Kind of an interesting picture there. And also what I'd like to point out is the profile of the rolls or the surface of the rolls is critical also. We wanna make sure that the rolls have enough traction to grab the material, squeeze, compress, and release the material in an accurate way. I touched a little bit on the roll side seal design. If you look at the rolls, we have two different side seal designs available. One is the static side seal, and you can see that on the left-hand side. It's typically a Ponzi or a Teflon material. It seals the material into the rolls, works for most of the applications, but for some really challenging applications, we also offer the circumferential side seal design. Basically, the top roll sits into a pocket or into the bottom roll and really creates a tight seal to avoid any side seal leakages. Let's focus on a larger segment of the machine right now, which is what we call the CVF feeder design. It's actually a patented design. CVF stands for combination vent feeder or combi vent feeder as we typically call it. This feed design actually has dual chambers on it. The chamber on the outside section of the feed screws that you see there, so sorry about that, is where the air can escape from the process. And the chamber on the right is where the raw material is presented for compaction. So one thing to remember, air has to escape from the powders we're compressing it. What typically happens is that the air will work its way down the center of the feed screw and then out through the back section of the CVF chamber. As I mentioned before, bear with me a moment here. As I mentioned before, the rolls have to grab the material and compress the material. You don't want to force the material into the rolls. You want the rolls to grab the material and compress it and then release it. Having a little trouble with the uh, video here. Bear with me for a moment. There you go. You can see a side view shot of the rolls and that's what they actually look like when they're running. There's typically a little bit more of a space, about two or three millimeters, but you can see the concept how the rolls want to grab the material and squeeze the material and compress it while the feed crew is simply presenting the material to the rolls. Another benefit of the CVF feeder design, as you can see here, is the section where there's a vacuum area. On the Alexander Work machines, we can pull a vacuum at the end of the feed screw housing. And what's interesting about that particular design is that the feed screw housing and the vacuum system there is not just for deaeration, rather what it's doing is it's taking the material and deaerating it a little bit, but helping to pull it to the outside of the feed screw housing. By doing that, the feed screw actually acts more as a metering screw. Instead of the material spinning of the feed screw, the feed screw then transports the material or presents the material very accurately to the counter-rotating rolls. 
Okay, I'm just pulling up a video of the vacuum system to give you an idea what that looks like in a 3D animation. Having a little trouble lo loading the video? Here it comes. So you can see the vacuum is pulled, the material gets pulled to the outside of the feed screw housing, and then the feed screw more or less acts as a transport mechanism. So once we've compacted the material in the compaction rolls, what we form then is commonly called flakes or ribbons. What we have to do then is mill up these flakes into granules. Alexander Burke machines typically employ a multi-step size reduction system. What's going to happen first is you have a flake crusher. That flake crusher is a slow rotating set of fingers which gently break up the flakes or the ribbons into small little particles, probably about a half an inch in size. Those particles will then fall down into a dual stage RFG or rotary fine granulator system. By doing a multi-step crushing or size reduction process, we generate the least amount of fines possible in the system. Just waiting for, this, for the presentation to advance. Here we go. Interestingly enough, we have a system called the AGS system or automatic spacing system on our AGS units. What actually happens there is there's a cam that actually adjusts the spacing between the screen and the rotor. The system detects when the clearance is pretty much down to zero between the screen and the rotor, and that's your zero point in the setup of the machine. In the recipe, then, you can enter exactly what you're looking for for a gap between the screen and the rotor. This design ensures that the machine is set up identically every single time, and you don't have operator variants from batch to batch or setup to setup. Some customers also do have a necessity for recycling fines in the material. That you can see, we have a depiction here of a roller compactor in the center with a screening deck underneath. And what happens after that is typically material that is fine is recirculated up into the feed hopper assembly again. Just waiting for the next video to load. All right, that's another example of a feed system that involves a recycle loop there. What typically happens using the CVS feed, CVF feeding system is really interesting. The small amount of fines that get recirculated are introduced to the back chamber of the CVF feeder. Let's assume that about 15% of the batch that we're running is representative of a recycle loop. Okay, 15% of the material will be presented to the back section of the feed screw. The feed screw transports that small amount of material forwards. 85% of the material is then introduced as raw material. The feed screw does a very effective job of mixing the recycled material with the raw material, transporting it and presenting it to the counter rotating rolls. We actually did a study at Alexander Work not too long ago where we mixed some red sugar with lactose powder and we ran the machine at a representative 15% recycle. And you can see one of the flakes that we got out of it here. There's a picture of one of the flakes right in front of you there. You can see there's a quite homogeneous distribution of the red sugar mixed in with 85% uh, lactose. There's a video clip of uh, the red sugar test and a flake coming out of the machine there. So let's talk a little bit about our product lineup. I've talked about the technologies in the machines which are available from small to large. Our machines start out with a BT120, which stands for Benchtop 120 unit. It's a small Benchtop unit that works fantastic for the R&D guys. Going up one size, you get to the WP120, which is a completely portable unit, self-contained regarding the electronics, the hydraulics, everything in it. You can wheel it from process suite to process suite. Another one that's not shown here is the WP150, which goes up a little bit larger in size. 120 gives you a capacity of about 40 kilograms per hour if you're running lactose. And then we can get to the larger WP200, which is truly the workhorse for the production industry. And capacities can be about 400 kilograms or higher for that based on lactose again. All of these are fully scalable from one size to the other. Interestingly enough, we also have for a really small unit, the BT120 or the WP120, something called the micro batch unit. The micro batch unit is a 
system that we can add to either one of these machines here basically enables the uh, fellows in the formulation department to run uh, product for uh, small batches as small as about five or ten grams as a matter of fact you can see it's basically where they can introduce a small amount of material of material onto the tray the tray will take that material run it through the rails and form a flake really interesting really cool feature and you can flip the machine back to a normal production unit after running that particular operation just waiting for the video to load so you can see what it looks like So at Alexander Work, I like to say that we're never sleeping. We're always coming up with something new, something that's going to push the roller compaction world to the next level. Uh, some of the innovations that we've introduced over the past couple of years are obviously addressing the OEB concerns. Our machines can handle OEB level four and OEB level five. We also can do flexible containment systems on these particular units. And something else that's new and innovative is we have an inline particle size analysis system, which takes a look real time at the material coming out from the discharge section of the machine and through feedback loops, adjust certain parameters in the control system to maintain the particle size distribution you're looking for. A lot of these innovations come out of our lab. A lot of these innovations come from push from customers. And also we do a lot of work with academia in the industry. We have a bunch of machines at academic partnerships throughout the world, several of them in North America, several of them in Europe, and also some over in Singapore and China. And I'm having some technical challenges again, so bear with me for a moment. So Al, I think I lost you here. That, that was a spectacular presentation. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there, the, I, I'll just wrap it up for, for Al here. He was at the very end of his presentation. Um, we're very honored to have them part of this event today and honored to have them take part in, in what we do in, 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 in the business. So uh, uh, if I can, we can, we're going to, we're going to wrap it up for Al. I'm sorry that there was a little technical difficulty for you. Uh, Al, and but we're going to move on. And, hey, Mike, can you hear me uh, now? Got, so, Mike, can you hear me? so Al, I'm yeah. So I'm uh, I I can hear you a little bit, but I'm going to wrap you up. I just uh, close you out. Thank you very much for for a great presentation. I'm sorry there were technical difficulties. Okay, thanks a lot, Mike. And anyone who's Thank interested, you. please reach out to us for further questions. And uh, we're here to work with you. We're here to run our equipment with you and here to do development work also. Hope to hear from you soon. So Al, are you, uh, are you, are you running a test for companies right now in your lab uh, during these, during these times? Yes, we are available for testing and doing development work in our lab. We're running on a skeleton crew, but we have to keep moving forward. Yeah, that's great. Great to have you. Good seeing you. Thank you very much. Thanks again, Mike. All right, man, thanks very much. Right. Okay.